Just make sure that it's we we live. No, I wanted to get a new sound for the soundboard, but I didn't have time. So I'm going to do that <laughs> tomorrow after I'm off work. It's that one clip where the guy's like, hey, demons, it's me, your boy. Nope, just me on that? All right. <laughs> That one's for me though. That's for, that's for me, I, really, I just really want the ability to hit a button at any time. <laughs> just have have that guy just be like, "Hey there, demons! It's me, your boy." Actually, that's good if we're doing it. You know, when we drink on the show. <laughs> Did you ping uh, iTunes tonight? All right. Yay, I can hear us. We live on pre show. Yeah, iTunes is, um, words. Oh, I do have community news. Oh yeah, I have community news too. Let's see if it's the same thing. I'm I'm patiently waiting. Oh, nope, different community news. Actually, it's not even community news, it's show news, but we can do that. Somewhere. We'll fit it in there. It was half time to put a period after that just for fun. Mm hmm. I know what's going to happen here. That's fucking spoiler alert on Mac Computer News. Bye bye. Ain't nobody keeping that thing. It's okay. Yeah. Yours already beat his. <laughs> it's true. All right. I'm going right, to. Let me go find the tweet that Dylan wrote. Okay.
All right, we're good. We get muted during the intros and outros, so don't worry too much. Today is June 29th, 2018. This is episode 87 of Maelstrom Radio. Maelstrom Radio. With your hosts, Flatus and Shinder. All right, I, I, yep, there you go. Wow, went through all that. Hi, <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit that the hell out. Let me, uh, boy, that loses that lose a lot of steam as soon as I can't, like, queue up. <laughs> Don't laugh, Shin. They can't see Shin laughing, but he's laughing. But anyway, hi. Uh, whoopah! Welcome to Maelstrom Radio. My name is Flatus. With me, as always, this host is he, him. Also, he really loves Smash Mouth, and he would name his first kid Smashly. It's Shin. Hey, now. It could go both ways. Better get your game on. Wow. That was impressive. <laughs> no, I'm not going to I'm not going to do this. I'm not doing this with you today. Never engage. This is a serious podcast. Oh, oh, we have some audio issues. I, I can hear all of the audio fine, so. Oh, it's you. You've muted yourself for once. You have pulled a tan, Lynn. Congratulations. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I better... It's going to be one of those episodes where I need to monitor OBS. I might just restart OBS if that's going to be the case. If it's going to do this. All right, audience. We would all disappear. We, I know, that's a sad thing. Uh, I can hear you on stream now, but... Okay, well, just listen, you did audience. something and it worked. I re had to reset my microphone. <laughs> so did everyone miss all of the intros? Did they miss them? They were somewhat good <laughs> i guess it'll be a uh an no, wait, there's, there's one still more. more intro to go with, yeah, yeah and then this host he <laughs> his fantastic awesomeness the light enduring red <laughs> hello <laughs>
They also call him Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make you feel all right. The false advertising begins already. Yeah. Mm, you came to Maelstrom Radio. The false advertising began a long time ago. <laughs> what did began. Dylan promise you when she mentioned this? I mean, there was Gil, a large house. Oh. Pictures of dogs. I've gotten one of these. We've got one of those three. Any intros were missed? Nothing? <laughs> what was I'm, I'm so sorry, audience. I think that nothing uh, is more about what uh, was been promised. But anyways, we have a little bit of news this week, so we're going to try to jump through that pretty quickly. Uh, Feast Regional Championships are on July 3rd. Yep. That's exciting. Who's going to be on my team? Who's coming with me? Not me. <sighs> All right. Uh, the preliminaries will be starting with the patch. With sorry, with the launch of patch 4.35 on July 3rd. Uh, the t- strongest teams from each region, being Japan, North America, and Europe, will compete to reign supreme in the region. And then uh, there will be a thing at FanFest, I believe, for those people. Yep. This is why. Who who wants to be on my team? Speaking of patch 4.3, uh, it is coming out next week, and we're getting heaven on high. And Flatus is going to run around on a dodo at that point. Actually, it'll probably be in about six months when he actually does the content, based on hey. historical reasons. I'm gonna I'm get that dodo. Dodos have googly eyes. I love it. <laughs> and tiny fly flap wings. Better or worse than the Namazoo with the dead eyes? I like the, the dead eye Namazoo's best. Honestly, True. might might actually yes, yes. be dead. Uh, the Japan Expo is also, uh, Final Fantasy is going to be at the Japan Expo, sorry, uh, uh, from July 5th to Sunday, July 8th. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're going to have the whole, like, I beat t-shirts again. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a Tsukiyomi shirt okay. and a uh, Bayaka shirt. So it's unlike, unlike uh, uh, E3, where you can get a choice of any of the shirts, you only get two. Excuse me. Uh, However, uh, there is a letter from the producer live coming up as well, but it's not going to be during the Japan Expo. Probably keep the devs sane. Uh, It's going to be in a few weeks from now, July 16th. Uh, As normal, it's at 2 a.m. Pacific, 5 a.m. Eastern, and normal times for the rest of the world. Uh, We're going to learn a little bit about Patch 4.4, the first part of it at least, a few announcements, and we're going to have the special guest, uh, two people between the Monster Hunter collaboration, that they announced at E3 are going to come and talk a little bit about that. So hopefully it kind of sounds like we might be getting it 4.4-ish. It's going to be the part one of 4.4, and then that, that's probably going to come around 4.4 as well. If not, maybe a little bit before it? Maybe like the... the whatever that one we got for PvP? Yeah. Guy? Yeah. That one? <laughs> oh, the Garo stuff? That one. Yeah. I was about to say kaiju. <laughs> Although, yeah, no, not it, not the same. Everybody hit up the damn forums for a kaiju event. We need a giant monster event. I mean, isn't that what the monster uh, monster hunter world thing is? Yeah, I but so. I thought fighting a giant Namazu would be great. To be fair, oops, go ahead. I'm saying I'm here for this giant Namazu year. Yeah. I don't want to derail this too much, but we did talk about a really awesome idea for this Final Fantasy collaboration event, which would be basically Monster Hunter in Eureka. Oh yeah, that was that's genius. <laughs> uh, a couple more things quickly on the news here. There's new items on the Mog Station. You can get the Fairy Tale Prince or Princess outfits. Uh, you get the whole set for however it is, Lock Two Gender, uh, eighteen dollars a piece. Beauty and King Door. No? All right. I'm sorry. Let's just fan fest ticket updates. Finally, we have fan fest ticket updates. Uh, July 10th, as we know, is the day that fan fest tickets will be uh, up for sale. The way that that's going to work this year is similar to how it is two years ago. They're going to be sending out uh, codes for anyone who is eligible. To be eligible, you've had to have an active account, including trials, I believe, uh, for 30 days, sometime between. January 1st and June 22nd of this year. 
Uh, if you qualify, they will be sending you a code to your email for each account. Make sure you are opted into marketing emails to receive that. Uh, once you get that code, you'll be able to use it on July 10th to uh, get into the virtual waiting room, which will allow you to buy up to four tickets, assuming they don't sell out. You think they have virtual highlights in that virtual waiting room? Or like Home and Garden Monthly? <laughs> Uh, it broke you on Home and Garden Monthly. <laughs> That's. I just can't come up with anything. But the, you I, know, I can't, but I can't. I, I'm nope. Uh -huh, but you, when you open the highlights, all the all like half the puzzles are done, but they're really done poorly, so you can't even really do them yourself because. <laughs> Except the bad ones, nobody likes. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> we have some community news. Phoenix Down Radio is raising money for Extra Life. So if you go, if you go donate some money and help them, uh, you can help save or destroy Klaus's beard. Why save it? Just destroy that thing. Get rid of it. Uh, just a side note as well. We're also raising money for Extra Life, uh, and we should have some news hopefully within the next couple of weeks about some events that we're going to be uh, planning for that. Yeah. And we have awesome Maelstrom Radio news. Uh, Geek Goddess Dylan Thorne has joined us as a producer. Uh, Kermit Flail. Uh, so uh, if you've if you've not met Dylan or heard Dylan, uh, you've you've probably heard Dylan on this show before. Dylan, are you here? Can we get Dylan real quick? I, I do believe that uh, she was promised a Kermit Flail from you. Oh, from me? All right, hold on. Specifically, I promised her that, so. Oh, it's hard. Hard. It's hard to I'm do here. it and talk. Hi, Dylan. Hi. Welcome to Maelstrom Radio. Thank you. All right. Everybody, uh, everybody in chat, say hi to Dylan and, and thank her for <laughs> making this a better production. <laughs> Uh, so go going forward, uh, Dylan's going to help us organize uh, the shows and really help us take after show 100, really take us into what I'm dubbing phase two. of <laughs> It's kind of like Marvel phase two. Let's go with phase four. We had phase one uh -huh. at the beginning. Yeah. Then we had phase two when I disappeared for six months and we don't talk about that time. Yeah. Then we had phase three coming back from that. <laughs> Wait a minute. We had, we had the darkest timeline when you were gone. No, I think we're still in the darkest timeline. We just changed the phase a little bit. Oh. You know so that what, moment when the music changes and everything starts going downhill? So wait, we found Earth 2 is what you're saying. Like we're on Earth 2 right now? That would explain a lot. <laughs> that would explain a whole lot. And Dylan yeah, is going to get us back. Chat. Phase 2 is when the Crucible reigned. And then, and then when, and then phase four is Dylan getting us back on track and to Earth One. Oh, that's true. We could have Dylan's phase four. So episode one hundred will be phase five. Hopefully, hopefully we don't get through any more phases in the next little while. When do we get the crossover event? <laughs> We've had quite a few of those. It's true. The biggest one being the Crucible takeover. We need a like an Avengers type crossover. <laughs> We've talked about that before. We should talk about that later. We should talk about that anyway, later. Anyway, anyway, we have things that we actually should talk about today. Yeah. Uh, so with us, we have Red and Lacey, uh, two community members uh, who uh, are part of the Final Fantasy XIV community, but also part of the LGBT plus community within the Final Fantasy XIV community. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna, normally we do, uh, like, you know, we, as we go on and go forth and, and during our show, we want to, you know, talk to interesting people that we know in this community and, uh, Dylan, thank you for introducing us to Red and Lacey. Uh, Lacey, Red, uh, you want to introduce yourselves and, uh, tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm Lacey. I play over on the Balmung server. Get your jokes out now, because I know they're coming. Um, I am certainly a member of the LGBT community. Um, 
and recently I have been helping um, lead a number of events over on Balmung focused around Pride Month. That sounds awesome, and I'm definitely going to follow up with some of those later. Absolutely. And our, uh, unlike uh, some other publications that I've heard about, uh, despite only one of us actually having characters on Balmung, uh, we are fairly pro Balmung here. That's why we're here. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. That's true. Uh, Red? Oh, hey. Um, Hi. My name is Red. I'm from the Gilgamesh server. server. Play a, a Roganin. Um, yes. I am infinitely less interesting than Lacey, but I'm hoping to also contribute something. So we say that every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I already know that you're more interesting than both of us. I'm and so we've sorry. only been talking for the past couple of days. True. I mean, you are the fantastic awesomeness, the light and <laughs> <laughs> I bet Shin had Smashly. <laughs> <laughs> the allest of stars. Yeah. <laughs> If I ever get on the Balmung, I think I have a character name now. Smashly All Star. <laughs> Smashly Allest of Stars. There you go. <laughs> it's gonna be a Lala fella for the record. All right. Please. Uh, I can't wait. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Uh, would you like to tell us about uh, your experiences in the Final Fantasy XIV in regards to being part of the LGBT plus community? Sure. That <clears throat> I've been in a lot of gaming communities over the years, from like tabletop gaming to I remember when EverQuest was new and very relevant, <laughs> all the way to now. Um, and I have to say. I mean, Balmung is a role-playing community, and we are oftentimes sort of like the odd child out in terms of any role-playing community in any video game, in any uh, MMO game. So in a lot of ways, I've always felt like that sort of, you know, co-culture, outsider thing is, is part of what makes a role-playing community interesting. And... Because in many ways, we, uh, the LGBT community is itself a co-culture. It, it kind of fits that we would sit right in that so neatly. I've heard that all over the place, there are specific LGBT free companies, link shells, um, communities. And on Balmung, we're all sort of together in what we do. And it's overall extremely accepting. So that's, that's one thing I would say. Um, just the openness and accepting uh, nature of the Balmung community. Uh, I have a I have a quick side question because uh, you mentioned EverQuest. Uh, I and, and, and hey. it's, no 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 it's not nothing Don't bad. Still my side questions. What's, all right, wait, what's your side question? I'm not gonna have all, uh, all right, all right. So my my side question was. Uh, it, it's mo I think it's mostly pertaining to like like uh, uh, RP. Do you think that something like EverQuest, uh, as when it when it first kind of stepped into and and created the MMO, um, do you think that RP was more accepting back in EQ days than it is right now? Just 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 out of curiosity, because we have a lot of people that RP in our in our chat tonight, and I think I think I think this is the first time we had somebody that was like may have RP'd back in EQ days. That could probably answer that. So, I'm not sure. That's an interesting question. When I think that far back, we didn't, you didn't hear so much about something like an RP server or like RP communities. Like, I think there was sort of the concept of immersion and there were people who more or less like role played because they didn't want to break their immersion in the game. And I'm sure that there was, you know, more like actual groups that did it. I just wasn't a part of it and it never seemed like something that was really public like published about or talked about or 
like advertised for in the way that it is now, not just in Final Fantasy, but in a lot of games. I remember even later on in in EverQuest 2, there were specific servers that were used for role players and there were role playing groups and you know, you could go through the streets and find people role playing, you know, the Knights of Freeport. Um so I think the immersion was different. It was sort of like there were players who preferred immersion and players who didn't. Does that make sense? That that uh, that's a great way to answer. I, I kinda wanna follow up this too. I in the article um or sorry, I should explain this. Uh in Dylan's article that was posted earlier this month, um you mentioned that you've kind of played everything from EQ1, EQ2. Uh, how have you kind of found the as evolution of this, uh, like these communities throughout the years and, and even between games and stuff? I, I know you mentioned EQ2 specifically, um, noticing the changes. And that's kind of where my background starts in was EQ2 from the beginning uh, for a number of years. Sadly, never on Antonia Bale, but... I did have a lot of friends that were on that server. Hell yeah, totally a bell. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was on uh, unrest. All right, so... The evolution, I think, maybe is less because of the community, and I'm speaking out of absolutely no researched experience, but just how I've seen it. I think it's the time as times have changed as things you know inclusion has become something that's more important in general to people um so to have gaming communities become more inclusive you know i i think to the time when just as it was written in the article uh people didn't want to talk about being girl gamers nowadays it's in a lot of communities it's not a big deal in some it's still a huge deal a huge deal but overall in mmo communities especially in role play communities um i've watched as being lgbt has become more you know quote unquote normal um it's become more open in those communities where having an lgbt character isn't out of the norm that's one thing i noticed is that a lot of people now play more openly LGBT characters. And I feel like that has followed suit with the time. I'm not sure where you're going with that. You sounded like you had a topic. I could hear you. I, hi. I know you could, but nobody else uh what i was going to say is that um red uh what what have been your experiences i, I mean i where did you, is like final fantasy 14 you're like your first step into an mmo or is have you gone as far back as like eq uh yeah do i need to like restate the question or are you like transmitting now i'm not sure if anyone's <laughs> no no you're, you're good Every, everybody's everybody heard it <laughs> oh man so, yeah. that you can ignore him uh, done no um i got my start years and years ago in guild wars one kind of fell into a guild leadership position there, bounced over to WoW, and from WoW here into Final Fantasy, I've kind of taken the uh, the, the Raiders progression rather than the RP. I definitely come to, uh, to these games looking for friends, looking for community, but I'm also kind of goal-oriented, and I'm, I, I like killing internet dragons. It gives me a sense of accomplishment. Um, but yeah, uh, Everything that Lacey had, had said, yeah, I, I'd echo a lot of that, particularly um, the sense of acceptance. Now, wh when you're dealing with goal-oriented raiders and such, in a, in, in a big way, who you, uh, who you are is secondary to what you can accomplish. Like, as long as you're not pissing off the people around you, as long as you're someone they can work with, then everything else will be fine. And I think that's more... You know that aligns more to the real world, per perhaps, it, where you see that same sort of uh, you see that same sort of uh, culture when you're getting a job or going to school or what have you. Um, that's uh, that said, I will say the Final Fantasy community specifically 
it, it's been nicer both among the Raiders and just among who, p- people you randomly meet uh, out in towns or in the world. They're nicer than they were in WoW. Um, I, I feel like I've seen more LGBT oriented FCs here than I was used to seeing in other games. But I don't know if that's because there are more. And I'm on Gilgamesh, so there's a, there's a, a, t- a ton of them there. Or if it's just because this is the game I've been playing for the last several years and there's, there's just more of them all around. I, I, I come from the World of Warcraft. <laughs> like vanilla, like early vanilla uh, stuff. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, molten core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when you said, you know, like Guild Wars 1 going into War- Warcraft and, and the raiding... You know, that sh- strikes a chord with me because I very much am the same person. I want to kill, you know, virtual dragons because that's that's what I love. Um, but there was always it was something that was always interesting as I think time went on with us, uh, at least with something with Warcraft. And um, I don't know if I don't know. If, and maybe you did experience. Maybe you didn't. <clears throat> there was the server Proudmore, which was kind of like the unofficial LGBT plus server. Uh, did you do any of the, like the Pride Month events there, or like that server crashed before because they got so many people <laughs> coming out for like a Pride parade on <laughs> out on yeah, that server? Uh, yeah, not in WoW. And uh, yeah, my personal life path through this whole LG- LGBTQA alphabet soup thing. Uh, I mean, I I was raised straight kind of came out as bi in high school but it didn't matter because i got married into a straight monogamous monogamous marriage so uh i felt like an ally for most of my adult life until i guess fairly recently i started dating my boyfriend about three and a half years ago but for th- for things like that back at the time when i was and i was on proudmore for for a bit bouncing between servers it, it didn't really register with me and I've been shopping around for free companies. I just found one the other day, and I'm really happy with them. But one of the other guilds I interviewed with, one of the things I made sure to ask about was their views on inclusion. Do they have politics in guild chat? That sort of thing. And when I was speaking with the guild leader there in their recruitment discord, they'd mentioned how they, they recognize that LGBT-oriented free companies exist. And they're not sure why. And it seems kind of silly, because when you're in the game world, what does that matter? You are. You have your avatar. You find friends. You go down internet dragons or here garlians and primals. Um, and when they said that, you know, it it, it got me thinking a lot because I've been in that mindset. I sign on to down dragons to meet friends. And what and uh, what does orientation matter? And over the past, I don't know, five, six, seven years, uh, particularly, I guess, in the in in the American climate, it, it it's been driven home more and more that it really matters. And, you know, for some people hop into a game for escapism, they want just to do internet dragons. Um, But some people are coming to a space like this because it's a lot easier for them to find like-minded individuals. Maybe they don't want escapism. What they want is the opposite. They want a space that they feel they can feel the support of their friends, where they can talk openly about the things that they've experienced and learn from the people around them while also enjoying the fact, oh, hey, there's a game here in this glorified chat room. I think you mentioned before too that you've been in both those sides or both those communities, like the tolerant uh, FCs or guilds that aren't specifically for like LGBT plus community, and then also uh, within ones that are directly for that. How, how have you kind of I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this? How would you kind of like describe the differences between those? Are like the how those how are they different for those who are not part of one or the other? Um, it pluses and minuses there. Uh, uh, the first guild that I joined on Gilgamesh, it's like one of the main ones that bailed themselves as the LGBT guild, but it turned out to be the, the young middle-class white gay male guild where guild chat was 75% of the time were jokes about ejaculate. And it's just like, uh, is this is this what gay solidarity looks like? Is, is this what it means? And it, it, in some way, not all the time, because there's a lot of great people there, but the rules on chat were really lax. So a lot of times it was, if you ask someone to imagine a parody of an LGBT guild, that's where the guild chat went. And that's just where it sat to the point where sometimes you would just mute it just so you could actually enjoy the dang game. Um, but I hopped from there into a different guild and 
you asked about the difference between just a tolerant guild versus one oriented. Basically, they're the same, at least in my experience, except the people in the oriented one get it. Like you, you don't have to walk on eggshells wondering, is this person over here going to freak out when they when I tell them I'm trans? Or is this person right here when they hear, hear my male voice and then I say my boyfriend or my husband, are they going to do that whole, what? You have a boyfriend? You're gay? I mean, that gets old. We get that all the time in real life, even in the modern accepting times, if you will. It's still not normal. If you are anything other than, than uh, heterosexual, and uh, the word is cisgender, the, the opposite of trans. Um, if you are the gender you were assigned, that's normal. And anything different from that is, in fact, different. It's othered. So it's nice to be in a guild where you don't feel that sense of other. Where even, because sometimes, and just even just the tolerant guilds, nice people, but the smallest sign that you're different, they'll point it out. Even it may not be a big thing, but I heard once that the analogy that having to deal with things like that is like walking through the world a world filled with little cobwebs. They, they don't hurt you, they don't slow you down, but you constantly feel them. Part of your headspace is always occupied with that sensation of them moving up your arms and legs, and you can't ever escape them. Uh, being able to just relax in an, a guild oriented around LGBT stuff, is there's really something to be said for it. It's a really, really good analogy. <laughs> I have not heard that before. It's right on point. Uh, uh, I got to cite my sources. It's from a blog. I can't. I couldn't find it earlier, but they were talking about microaggressions, and it was it, it was in the sphere of feminism. But I think it applies to a lot of to a lot of issues. It's really good. It works really well. It's funny because I've I've talked about it before, and I know this is an issue for a lot of trans people. Like, you know, you get on a voice chat in a group that maybe isn't as accepting with mm. a voice like mine that's a little more masculine and it's like oh that chick will be a dude forever and she sounds like she's probably owning uh some kind of deli in brooklyn and like and, and then you have to live with that and then and, you know everybody gets a good yuck yuck out of it and it seems all fun and whatever but they don't get it they don't get that that little thing is breaking down my entire identity or the identity of any trans person or non-binary person and not respecting names, words. It, it seems silly when it's not your experience, but that's all of who we are. So being able to be in that community that just gets it, you know, it's nice to not have to explain yourself and be the trans friend, just to be the person that you are and not have to Try and describe what that means. That is a. It's, I mean, it's, for a lot of us, I think that even listen to our show, um, I don't. I don't think they've ever stopped, including myself. I, you know, I don't think I've ever stopped to realize like, it may not be that way. Like I, I don't feel that going into my FC. Um, not because I'm the leader and everybody's like that that dork. <laughs> um so I, I don't think a lot of people like stop and realize like there may be there are very valid reasons to have these types of FCs and these places for people to go. Um and there may be people out there that may hide just in a regular FC just because they, they don't know or don't know that there there are these places or don't try to seek them out. Um, so that is, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just like, I'm shocked in a good way. Like I'm, I'm, gl I'm happy there are places like this. And, but I, and I, I also feel like there may be people out there that may not know that yet. And that, that kind of sucks. <laughs> and uh, I mean, experiences very wildly. I, I, I compare it to so, uh, someone who plays casually and maybe they want to set their foot into raiding and they, Maybe they read up, they do Google searches and see a guide on the fight, guide on their class. They step in and just suck hard. And one or two people, or you know, maybe there's a party of two or three in this little eight-man instance, just start blasting them, uninstall your game, your trash. And they will hop out and think, wow, rating is terrible. Now they're getting this from a sample size of one, but they're like, I don't want to put myself through that again. Unless it's seven people I know, 
I'm not doing that. I feel like, especially given, um, this is coming from my own experience with the different LGBT guilds I was on, in, on Greg, they were night and day in terms of the feel, the support. So if there's someone out there who is like, hey, this exists, I will try it. And they go out and they find one of these that is really not a good fit for them. Um, back, you know, something, I, so, so, something that worries me is that that can be enough to shut them down towards that avenue and be like, oh, wow, LGBT uh, guilds and games are obnoxious. Why would anyone, why would I ever do that again? Um, so <laughs> j- j- just a caution for anyone who tries that out. It's the same as anything else. You're going to find great ones, bad ones, or w- uh, one that's uh, not a good fit for you. It may be good for other people, but. Even as a separate community, like it, it's so varied. There's so much difference between people with it. Like it it's not like it's a, a small, very niche group. It, it's a very wide, varied set of people. and with any large sets of groups, you're going to have different people. Some you'll fit in with, some you won't. Some people you'll relate to better, sometimes you won't. You just kind of have to find where you fit in, I guess. For you personally, not as any, yeah. Hmm. So, and it still reigns true. I think we've even said it on the show before, like find your people, find find the group where you belong. Because it'll make anything more enjoyable, right? Like, you know, I, I I love RFC the way it's grown and the people in it. Um, we've had some some bad, <laughs> some some rotten folk, <laughs> um, but they'll this is they'll news to me. I would have hit the ban and kick button really fast. They leave on their own accord. We had one person leave over music choices. <laughs> <laughs> were, were, were they wrong or were you? Uh, it wasn't even me. I, we had three people talking about concerts, and I li- literally said, "This this FC has poor music choices." And left. Well, they're finding the right fit for them, I guess. <laughs> and I was like, "By all means, go ahead." I've had people leave guilds all like for many reasons. I was like, "That was the first time I've ever seen somebody leave over like somebody else's music choices." I'm like, "That's an opinionated thing." <laughs> And I didn't. I never even got to tell, like, ask him, like, what do you listen to? So, uh, Paul in chat here brought up a good question. Uh, what if you don't have a group of people and can never find one? Anyone want to take a stab at that? Oh, uh, I hope you're on Gilgamesh. <laughs> we, I Not mean, yet. We're convincing him to come over. There, um, there are tools out there. Um, like Reddit has a has a really neat subreddit ffxiv recruitment i think it is where guilds post fairly often and if you really just don't have any social connections you can just start looking at some of the larger ones there or just some of the smaller ones if you're looking for that because people who are taking the time to post those things are looking for you the same way that you might be looking for friends or just random whispers i mean maybe more so in a game like this where we all have a shared connection through the interest in the game like if you just walk up to someone in the mall and say, oh, hey, you look great. Like, that comes off as creepy. But I, I've made a fair number of friends here just by going to random homes and being like, and then messaging them, your home is beautiful. Or if I love the way they're glamored and say, hey, you've really put that together well. You look fantastic. Well done. Um, and sometimes they thank you and move on. Sometimes they say nothing. Other times the conversation starts. And all you really need is that foot in the door before you, start, you can start finding people who you can get along with. Uh, our our friend Paul's from from the UK, and he's like, "What the the f is a mall? Uh, it's uh, it's where you go, it's where it's where you go to lose hope." <laughs> Hell. Uh, also, yeah. Also, uh, if you if you go to the mall, and you see the security guard, and you say, "Hey, you look you look you're looking cute," they will chase you on their Segway. <laughs> So uh, be warned about that. They don't. They don't find it. It's not that they don't find it creepy. They will just chase you. A lot of people are saying that complimenting glamour is definitely always a winner. I do want to point out there is a very specific difference between complimenting someone's glamour and being really creepy. If you have a question as to where that line is, be very careful with what you're posting. If you don't have a question where that line is and you can understand what a compliment is, by all means, please do. If you see me in my bunny suit, you're pretty much welcome to tell me anything you want. And we do. <laughs> I, that I, would look nice on anyone else. 
<laughs> oh, I have pictures I can show you later. Yeah, they're all incriminating. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they're on Twitter. <laughs> I don't even wear the bunny ears. I wear the slime king slime hat. <laughs> oh, it's it's a thing. It's great legs and a jiggly hat. <laughs> Sorry, Lacey, I, I think you, were you trying to say something earlier about this topic as well, or? It's about the um, meeting people? Yes. So I kind of think to real life, and I mean, I'm taking this from the experience of a trans person. Now, where I live is pretty liberal, so I can walk through the street and people are like, whatever, man, just pay for your shit and move along. But in a lot of places, it's scary to walk out and be who you are. Um, whether that's in a game world or the real world, I, I can totally understand that. Um, oh my God, you're six foot seven? That's fine. I'm six feet tall and I used to be a linebacker. So imagine how that is in a gay bar. Um, just a lot of it comes from inside yourself too you know if you can feel safe in your own heart and you you know i know this is very self-helpy but if you feel safe in yourself and you kind of learn to love who you are and know that you're good on your side of the street you'll find that people will come around you'll find that having that confidence in yourself and exuding it out will bring people to you even if you have to fake it because I fake it a lot. I think we all do. The old fake it till you make Every it. Every Friday at 6.30. <laughs> Faking it with flatness and shit. That's a great podcast name. Hold on a second. It's a very different podcast name. <laughs> the offshoot, Failstrom Radio. Yeah. Oh, don't oh my. worry. We already have Mealstrom Radio. Yeah, that's our food show. Although Failstrom Radio is really great too. That's like our blooper reel. Like I thought that's our normal show. Oh. <laughs> Mealstrom Radio does have a Twitter account though, so it's slightly legitimate. It is. We might record a live show in Vegas. <laughs> uh so uh, how how is uh you know being a gamer uh shaped your experience um like growing up I, I mean we i think we're all kind of like in that like age range where like game you know gaming was available to us and you know in some form or fashion and we got to grow up um you know being able to like interact with other people like how do you feel like gaming shaped your experience going from like maybe even early days to to now God, I've always been a nerd. Always been a nerd. Always been, you know, the weirdo. So when I think, you know, here I say this in front of a bunch of gamers who are like, hey, maybe don't call us that. But it was the experience growing up in the late 90s and, you know, early aughts of just being like, oh, God, you're the gamer. And now it's like cool. But I think about my experience as a gamer and just a general geek who would be setting up Gundam models while everyone else is playing sports. Um, when I finally came out and started to transition and people were like, you're an outsider again. I'm like, oh, dude, I've been doing this for like the last 15 years. It's cool. I know what I know what's going on. Yeah, outsider, I'm there. I got it. We're good. So it made things a lot easier because it's like you're kind of used to being in that co-culture of being a gamer or, you know, nerd, geek, dork, whatever you want to call yourself. So I feel like my experience as a gamer was sort of like the pre-show of coming out. <laughs> oh, 
para sa Yep. Sorry, you are on a really, really good point there, too. Hi, you can hear me again. Sorry. I do not know what's going on. It happens every once in a while. I'll have to check my audio stuff after the show. I apologize, everybody. Uh, my point was is that growing up, <laughs> uh, that I was, you know, I I was learning my place and I was better accepting of where, you know, who I was as a person. Um, you know, I you know, like and thankful my parents didn't attempt to always force things on me. They they always wanted to be like, you're going to go do baseball. And I was like, all right. And I did it. And but I was like, all right, I'm out. Like, <laughs> you know, I did it for a little bit because it wasn't my jam. Karate was my jam. I like that. That was my. F- <laughs> um, but like playing music, um, playing video games, um, that stuff connected me with people playing Magic the Gathering, like like going to the comic book shop and interacting. Like my parents kind of started seeing like that's how he's making friends. Um, so they kind of let me do that. That was like the, you know, <laughs> raspberry. <laughs> Damn it, shouldn't. Um. <laughs> So I think I, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see like, like now I'm just like, it's, you know, this is, it is what it is. Like I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm proud to be this way. I'm, I'm glad that nerd nerd culture as a whole is exploding. Like D and D is very popular right now. Again, like it was, you know, like it, you know, it's growing more. People are accepting of saying it's not, it's not nerd. It's not uncool to, to create a pen and paper character anymore. It's the cool thing to do. And I think I think we're living in exciting times. <laughs> Don't have to be scared of the video boards anymore. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> but it's a whole new world out there. These kids are talking in terms we don't understand. They're in front of their video boards. We sure are. <laughs> oh my god. I did warn you. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, listen. That that's like an hour long video about how like how bad Final Fantasy is for kids and like it's for Satan and stuff it's like beautiful. that. Beautiful. Yeah. Final Fantasy. Yep. Yeah, this is where I got this. Get in touch with your wizard. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. A lot I'm of people should get... I haven't played my favorite clip of this one yet, but... You mean... And learn all the levels of magic. You see, it's not just a simple one little thing. There are eight different levels of magic, both white and black. <laughs> I mean, that guy really laid into Final Fantasy. He, like, broke it all down. How, do, how else are you supposed to know there's eight different levels of magic? Both white and black. If you combine them, then you get red. Yeah. It's true. It's good. S- somehow. Yeah. It's magic. Someone didn't, have a ba- it. <laughs> Someone didn't have a basic color wheel when they were looking at glasses. No, we explained it the same way as everything else. It's because of the echo. Oh. Well, also because Grey Mage would be terrible. The most <laughs> boring class. They're the one that's kind of, like, iffy. They're always on the edge. They're always meh about it. Hey, Grey Mage casts us a spell. Eh. Eh, I guess. Someone needs to do a comic of that. <laughs> Great Grey Mage. Failed Final Fantasy fourteen concept. It's cost of Grey Mage. Uh, if, if I have to. Grey Mage sounds like my real life class. <laughs> Grey Mage is all of us. I, I cast Apathy. <laughs> I cast Super effective. I cast I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Jim. Cast, eh, TV. <laughs> Counterspell. I cast in snooze. I cast snooze. <laughs> Cast infusion. Yeah. Their their global cooldown timer is five more minutes. <laughs> Chain spell. Uh, Netflix binge watching. Yeah. Get the get this Yoshi P. <laughs> Gold. We're in. We're on yep. the. We're on the team. Five point oh. We're already on a list. Yeah. We're on a. Yeah. Uh, shows like community leaders that will never show up at anything important involving Final Fantasy fourteen and Square Enix. We're on that list. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Red, what about you? I mean, uh, how how is gaming shaped? <laughs> uh, 
Are all and also, are you a gray mage? <laughs> uh, in my best moments, I guess. No. Um, growing up, I was exceedingly uncomfortable dealing with people outside of my friend circle, and this kind of went on through high school and into college. And at about that time, I got I get dragged into that Guild Wars One MMO, join up with some friends, add a few more people. Uh, drama happens. Some of my friends get kicked in an attempt to keep as many people together as possible. I hop out, form a new holding guild, grab everyone under it, and that was how I accidentally became a guild leader. Uh, it always it, happens by accident. It yes, um, absolutely. Uh, that that guild grew, got really successful. I I made lifelong friends. I'm I'm still in contact with now. Like oh god, 15 years later, I'm so old. Um. Same sort of thing happened in WoW. We picked up our Guild Wars Guild. A lot of us moved over to WoW. It grew. It expanded. We became a presence on the uh, in the community of that server. It was an RP server, Sonarian Circle. It was bottom of the barrel when it came to rating. But in terms of personalities, like again, made lifelong friends. I've seen them in real life occasionally. Um, so they were my excuse to go to Canada uh, a year ago when I went to Halcon. That was Ooh. a blast. Um, but th through the process of working through meeting new people, talking with them, uh, dealing with conflict management, because what online game isn't complete without drama, um, those were skills that translated really easily into real life. And all of a sudden, I find myself being able to deal with conflicts at work or problems that happen in the classroom in ways that I would not have been able to a few years prior. Like... It was the MMOs were training wheels and in social interaction for me, I guess. Um, and with that, yeah, I don't know that I'd have the job I have now. I don't know that I would have had as many successful real life personal interactions with people at work, at school, or or where have you, if I hadn't gone through that sort of experience in the games. Quick side question: How annoyed are you that you can't actually put this on a resume? Um, I actually have. Okay, that's pretty impressive. Um, I saw, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, I did, uh, uh, years ago, I was doing some job hunting in Boston, and that did, I brought it up once just to see how it flew. Hint, it did not fly. But th the job I have now working, working at an arts nonprofit, um, all, very uh, wide variation in experience is embraced and valued within some communities and some co corporate cultures and not in others. So sometimes it's useless. Uh, I remember seeing, gosh, uh, MI, not MI, yeah, MIT, no, Harvard. Harvard has like a business magazine, this online web journal. And some years ago they were having, I remember seeing the study they did where lo some international companies, this is like tw 2013, 2014, were realizing that if they're having projects happen across the world where the only way you can communicate is with, you know, you don't have any of the nonverbal cues because people, people didn't have webcams in 2014, apparently. It was all through email. It was all through voice chat. And s some savvy managers were figuring out that if you needed people with these skill sets, you, you would ask them if they had these skill sets. And two types of people had them, either people who had done this before or gamers of all things. Like you were seeing some of these big international companies that were like, hey, gamers literally do international project management. They schedule, they lead, they analyze problems and break them down. Maybe the, maybe breaking down why your raid DPS is low also translates into trying to figure out why your metrics were low last month. It, I won't say it's widespread, but it exists. And it gives me a bit of hope that if gaming and nerd culture was a pariah 20 years ago, and now is mainstream uh, uh, in the entertainment industry, it gives me some hope that in 10 or 20 years, it'll be mainstream in corporate culture as well. Actually, Just when you were making a good point, too. You have to change your name to Tanlin. All right, look, it's working. It, it's funny, I just have to select the mic again and it starts working. It's weird. It's like... I'm not, if I don't talk for a little bit, it's like, mm, all right, I'll go sleep. It's not cool. It's not cool, I say. Hi. That being said, I was, I always, all I said was higher flatus. <laughs> <laughs>
something something years something something FC leading guild leading um so with that being said uh with everything like you know with being gaming have, uh, have you noticed any ch uh changes take place in the gaming communities in general over the years uh you've been a gamer like 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 You know, I mean, any... sorry, I think you're cutting out a little bit here on Discord. As oh, well. okay. Oh, like, geez. Got... Um, ju uh, ju just what you would expect when you talk about it going a little bit more mainstream. You get more, you know, uh, parents who are raiding out after their kids go to bed, or you get people who talk about how the I don't know. This is this is going to sound like the most '90s movie thing ever, but yeah. Uh, so, Echoing what Lacey had said earlier, you had the people who wanted to go out and do sports, and you had the people who wanted to stay in and build Gundams. But now you find a number of people who do both. They talk about, sorry, I can't stay past, past X time. I need to go to bed because tomorrow we have the match. And it's like, I don't remember the crossover being quite that much. Um, I definitely ran in the groups that did things like drama or orchestra or what have you. And there wasn't a whole lot of overlap between the the, ga the gamers and the sports jocks and now if someone tried to make the case that, that there was no overlap i would just i would just say that they haven't been paying attention Mm. Gladys, Paul says no. you're not. I am, and I'm seeing my my my, my the the boop boops. <laughs> it's booping. Nope, you're, you're not booping on stream. What? I'm not booping on stream. Oh, now you are. Paul's lying. <laughs> well, I can hear you now. Don't listen to Paul. Well, I mean, Paul's here in a few seconds back, so yeah, he's yeah. in the past. Where are the no? Where in the future? Oh, We're no. speaking to you now. You're all in the, future in the future for me. Yeah. Oh, it's true. He's not lying. Oh no, he's not lying. I love you, Paul. I know you're not lying. I can hear you on stream now. Paul. Paul's the jolly green giant. He's great. He is. He's. He. His hair is green. I think his beard's green. And he's six foot seven. Six foot seven. Really hope he comes to fan fest this year. Big ol' big ol' green bear. <laughs> Billowy bear. <laughs> now I want to see him stand right. next to you, but anyways. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like if we're having the LGBTQ episode talking about people as bears has very different meanings. <laughs> I've been thinking that the whole time! <laughs> uh, we must run in different circles. <laughs> well, to to cl clarify... And yet not as different as you might think. To clarify... <laughs> I might actually be a actual living like bear of the forest. <laughs> Paul <laughs> Paul is the other bear. <laughs> he just is green. <laughs> There's words on the Crucible server that say they've never seen me and a forest bear in the same place. <laughs> Listen, the Crucible started that rumor, <laughs> and it just stuck. They just they just believe I'm an I'm actual. Yeah, they just believe I'm an actual bear. <laughs> like, go into the woods, steal picnic baskets. <laughs> if I was gonna be any bear, I'd be Yogi. <laughs> to be I'd real, be Yogi. I'd be Yogi. Cause let's let's be real. If I'm gonna live in the woods and caves and stuff, I'm stealing picnic baskets. <laughs> I'm also gonna wear a tie and that cool hat. <laughs> No? <laughs> I still to wear the bear mask. The, it's over there. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Hang on, I, we're breaking stream for the bear mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so, so tough to put on with the damn headset. Hey, I wanted to chew. There is a video of him wearing the bear mask out there, on YouTube. There is. I, actually, there's a, there's a new bass that may be purchased just because I think it's easier to get on and off. It. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Is that a good hint? <laughs> Fair hint? Try it again. I don't know if we heard you. 
It sounds like all of Kashyyyk is just screaming. Yeah, it's a porg, if you didn't know. That's my, that's my porg impression. <laughs> that's my Yoda impression. <laughs> what happened? Where are we right now? <laughs> and back on topic. And so... <laughs> Bears are distracting. Yeah, they are. Uh, what... <laughs> All right, so with everything, uh, what can you learn from your experience uh, that transfers and how we relate to one another throughout the community? Just be open. Just be open to different people with different experiences. Um, Don't be judgmental. You know, I think about it every time when there's a really terrible player in a pug where I'm like, oh, they're awful, and I want to say something, but you know what? Like. I've been in that position because of who I am and how I identify. So I can't sit there and ask people to treat me with the respect that I want if I'm not willing to give everyone a shot. And I think keeping that kind of mindset in general makes anyone, makes people just more friendly and willing and accepting. That I think is the greatest lesson that I've taken and that I'd like to see people listen to is just even if you're just having a, a shit day and you're with a person that you don't care about, just just kind of like swallow it for a minute. Think about them. Think about walking in their shoes and be open. Be open to their experience as a person. Make you more friendly. Red? Um, I th- <sighs> I think, particularly when we're in an environment like Eorzea, we you have something here that you don't necessarily have in a lot of places in the real world, which is uh, this bond of shared connection, of shared interest. You are already starting from common ground. There are already things you can talk about, assumptions you, uh, some assumptions you can make about likes and preferences and whatnot. And a lot of times, getting to know people outside of your own social circles, uh, the same sort of people you always get to know anyway, moving outside of that is hugely beneficial. It it teaches you the things that you didn't know, uh, things you didn't know that you didn't know. I'm thinking about how just, just earlier in, in the, in the show, we were talking about how for a lot of people, the idea of the existence of LGBTQ guilds or the benefits that they have to offer could be completely off the radar for someone who stands to benefit from that. I think that extends to a lot of things, and beyond just um, beyond just orientation, we're talking more than just well. I don't have any trans friends, but now I'm learning about what that experience is like. We can talk about what it's like to be someone of a different gender than you, or someone from a different country, or or, or something from a different race. I dare say, I think a lot of MMO people would say they maybe feel a bit more comfortable, a little bit more. Um, uh, with world knowledge, because when you get to raid with someone in Australia, you get to know more about Australia than perhaps you would have otherwise. So I don't think it should come as a huge surprise that the same can be true if you meet people of different orientations or races or genders or what have you. Um, sorry, I derailed myself. <laughs> um, the And the other big thing I would say is, because you have this great opportunity, um, don't lock yourself out from the benefit of that. You're, you're going to meet a ton of people who have a vastly different experience from you. If someone from Iceland tells me, expresses surprise that milk is only $2 a gallon here in America because it's 7 or $8 equivalent in Icelandic kroner, like my reaction isn't, well, that can't be. To me, it seems obvious that you know, it could be. Maybe Iceland has different laws. Maybe, maybe their dairy programs are, are a lot more isolationist, a lot more pro- uh, protectivist. Um, you don't quite as often see the same level of benefit of the doubt. If someone tells you, my boss looked at me a funny way earlier today when I was at work, or he didn't listen to me at all because he was judging me because he hears the lisp in my voice or because I'm a woman or for whatever reason. Um, I don't quite as often see that same benefit of the doubt, but since we give that for people who live in other countries and have other experiences from us geographically, um, that's a really good thing to carry over 
to when you're talking to people who live a different life because they're a different gender or a different race or orientation or whatever. It's giving people the benefit of the doubt and believing them when they tell you things. You don't instantly have to trust everyone completely, but when someone tells you something in their life that differs from your experience, your reaction should not be, well, that doesn't sound right. That's never happened to me. Your reaction should be, oh, well, I believe you. And if that's happening to you and not to me, why could that be? Side note, West Coast people look at me really funny when anytime I mention that milk is in a bag. That, I mean, that's an abomination. Oh, no. I will not apologize. <laughs> well, I have a question about the bag milk real quick. <laughs> Stay on it. <laughs> now, when you say it's in a bag, like, I, I, you know, but like, is there like a little spout on the bag? What's going on there? No, you cut it. What are you talking about? Hold on. <laughs> Bag milk? All right. How much milk? Like, like, all right. So we buy things in like gallons and half gallons. Like how much milk do you get in the bag? Exactly. Wait, wait. Or do you put the milk in another container? Like, do you cut the I milk? I say it's about a liter and a third, 1.3 liters or so. Okay. It's usually about four liters split into three bags. So when you buy a milk, you buy, th- it comes in bags of three. <laughs> Yes, you get into three bags. Is there a reason for the bags? <laughs> I put a link into chat. Is there a re- I need to know why you there's... You take it, you have a container, and then you put the bag in the container, and you snip the edge of it off, and then you can pour it. Is there special milk containers? But... There are. <laughs> the whole why process just... seems convoluted. <laughs> why wouldn't you just buy one container of milk, and then you use that container and not have a bag and... <laughs> Is it like a like we're solving some sort? Of, wait, all right. Are the bags somehow like biodegradable? Well, probably by now they are, but I'm assuming that it's cheaper than doing like a box of milk. Well, plastic's readily cheap. We do plastic gallons. Yeah, but you use like a hard plastic jug. <laughs> Listen, the best things come out of jugs. All right, moonshine. <laughs> For example, look, don't be. Don't be knocking our jugs. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I, I agree on this fact that good things come out of jugs. Yeah. I also don't drink milk, so... so what did we learn on Maelstrom Radio Night? Good things come out of jugs. <laughs> took, took us all episode to get to it, but here we are. That's, that's what we learned tonight, folks. Good things come out of jugs. Happy Pride Month, get your jugs. <laughs> get your jugs. <laughs> <laughs> Welp. Derailed. <laughs> oh my god, Paul. <laughs> Paul just went there. Okay. Okay. So, oh, Paul, Paul will always go there. You do not have to doubt that. Yeah, no, Paul. <laughs> Paul is one half of Moogle Go Round Radio, along with Chili. Yeah. Very awesome podcast. Very, very off topic. I don't think they've been on topic since they started. <laughs> no, that's what uh, I mean. They're very, very off topic. Like, they had a topic at the first episode, and they've gone way off of that since then. Yeah. I learned so I mean, much about we milk. Like the, Listen, I, one I, of the like later episodes and talked about Cheeky Nando's for half of it. That's true. Cheeky Nando's, by the way. I still want to experience a Cheeky Nando's. I've been to Nando's. But anyways, we should get back onto I, our topic. <laughs> just pointing out, by the way, the number of <laughs> Discord messages I've gotten about good things coming out of Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> You're welcome. <laughs> welcome to Maelstrom Radio. Yeah. There's more where that came from. Yeah. Do you think we can get sponsored by, like, big, big jugs? <laughs> like, the big jug court? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, Is there a jug uh, conglomerate here? Yeah. yeah. Listen, Maelstrom Radio is going to get try to get sponsored by uh, two things. Uh, big beer and big jugs. <laughs> No? Uh, Not big beer, really, we want small beer. We want, that could oh. be topical to hear if you'll think. Yeah. Oh, 
for it. That's <laughs> oh, no. a, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. The, uh, the, the synergy seems a bit better with Millstorm Radio, though. You might want to consider moving the Jugs one over there. Oh, true. 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 Millstorm Radio, we got Jugs. Listen if, a, listen, if somebody makes their own beer and made Maelstrom Radio beer, like Maelstrom beer for us, I'd drink it. Like, <laughs> shit. Uh, home brewers or small breweries, get at us. <laughs> if you like us, get at us. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Like, if somebody's like, we made you a stout. <laughs> I like the idea behind it, but I'm not sure if I'd want to try someone's homebrewed basement beer. What if it was really good? <laughs> like, like... If we really... If someone else tried it first and didn't die, I'd consider it. All right, you can't kill us. <laughs> Jugstrom beer from a bathtub radio. <laughs> from a bathtub. <laughs> Fun fact, but, uh, four-ish years ago, you drank yeah, four-ish years ago when I went to a convention in Vegas, someone did bring their own home-brewed beer there and did fill up their bathtub with ice, and that's where the jugs of beer were. Was this uh? We're halfway there. Was this a uh, uh, SOE live? This was. Was this the one I missed? This was. I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> there are many things that happened that week. And they all stay in Vegas. With that being said, <laughs> that's a bad transition. Anyway. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, so what what can others do uh, when they see anti LGBT plus behavior? Like, is there uh, like is the best thing to do is just like walk away, try to fight it? Like, I feel like fighting on the internet is not the best course of action <laughs> because trolls are gonna troll. Do you think the best thing is to like kind of just like be the bigger person and just walk away? My knee jerk reaction is punch them, but I recognize that that's not really like useful so the better option is don't engage and report them and get as many people who were there who agree with you to report them as well because that's more or less how you beat that so to point out paula you were complaining earlier that people said that you were scary but when your comments on that are kill them i'm a big person i will kill them it's kind of understandable why I like Paul. Paul and I could be friends. That was pretty great. Paul's mom is also a fan of our podcast. <laughs> I just said that Paul's mom is a fan of our a fan of our uh podcast. Hi Paul's mom. <laughs> She ra last time we said hi, Paul's mom. She ran into his room and yelled. She's like, "They said hi to me." <laughs> <laughs> oh no, she's in Florida. Your mom's here. Where's your mom right now? <laughs> that sounded wrong. This, this is her. <laughs> no, Gladys, no. <laughs> Awkward questions for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I I feel like I owe her a beer. Now you know what? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe don't buy Paul's mom a beer. That sounded weird. This is that kind of stream. No, it's, well, <laughs> you know, I don't know where she is in Florida, Orlando. That's like three hours away. I'm not going to Orlando to see Paul's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy I'm I'm just guessing be right back Orlando or bus <laughs> anyway <clears throat> uh so with that uh oh <laughs> oh no um so with that, uh, Lazy, uh, what sort of events are you putting together on Balmung? So Balmung Pride um, is being put together by a number of people. 
So shout outs to Palazzo Aldenard, um, Equinox, Lucky Sparrow. Um, let me look through the list of people. So I actually give people Drunken Moogle. Pretty much everybody has done something. Um, we are on our last two events, which are coming up tomorrow. There is going to be a parade and a performance um, run by Equinox, and then also a um, Pride Prom tomorrow night uh, run by Palazzo Aldenard and um, some of us from the Lucky Sparrow. So if you are on Balmung, the parade begins at 5. And events run 5 all the way along to the prom at 8 p.m. Um, this is all Eastern time. Otherwise, we've done everything this month from a drag show to a um, vigil. A vigil held in the honor of, you know, people who have not had a lot of fortune and just the general pains and strife our community has had to come through. and lots of bars decorated like rainbows. You would have plenty of cocktails. That didn't come out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> and yet it still did. To be fair, Paul is everywhere. Not as many places as Chile. Chile is literally everywhere. Glad I see you lost Mike again. But to convey his his message, Flatus uh, is curious if you have a character on Belmont, Paul. Yeah. We'll we'll get that answer. We will get. <clears throat> so while we we'll roll through our a little bit of our closing thoughts. Um, so do you have any uh, uh, resources for people who may be interested in joining LGBT plus groups within Final Fantasy XIV? It could be server based um, as well. <laughs> yeah, but well, there are some of the bigger gaming clans out there that uh, span a couple different games or different servers can be really good starting points if you are like really disconnected and need a starting point for Square One. Like for Final Fantasy itself, um, I know one I've seen a lot is Ge is Georgia. Uh, they've got a couple affiliated free companies. I think they're up to four or five now. I think they just gained a fifth one. I don't think it's on their website yet, but it's in their Twitter. Um, if you happen to be on a server where they are, you can hit them up. Or uh, there was a multi-game group I, I was with before, the Rough Trade Ga uh, Gaming Company or Gaming Commission or uh, Clan or some sort. They've got a presence in, I think, Guild Wars 2, uh, something in Elder Scrolls, I believe. So if you just go looking for, for enough of these, find one that has a presence on your server or hop in. You won't know anyone when you get started, but half the people who join these things don't know anyone when they get started. So they've all been where you've been. So you don't have to worry about being too awkward or not fitting in. You're, everyone has been through the steps you're going through. Is there a, um, well, you've already mentioned some websites. Uh, is there any specific, like, link shells or FCs on your respective servers that you can maybe point people towards? Or is or do you consider, like, the Reddit, uh, like, the Reddit uh, for recruitment, like, a good, a good place to try to find that? Uh, uh, at first glance, I'd, I'd really recommend the affiliated free companies with Georgia. They've, they're on like three or four different servers, so you've got some pretty good chances of them being on yours. I know they've got two on Greg. Okay. I'm uh, liking that I'm finding about all of these things about Greg, and like, I didn't know any of this before today. All new Greg stuff. It's okay, people don't even know we're on Greg, but once they find out we're on Greg, it's gonna... And they leave. <laughs> Oh, the, we have two giant fish statues in our yard. Oh, no. 
<clears throat> uh, Lacey, did you have anything else to add to that list, or? I don't. It's it's a little difficult for Balmung because I don't feel like our LGBT community is kind of everywhere. Like we're all we all got somebody. Um, you just need to be able to get into Balmung. Right. So really, the trick is getting to Balmung. I have uh, not mastered that one yet. Is it I, locked off again completely, or is it like is it like it, weird hours? Yeah. It's no, it's 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 dead. It's, it's bread, Jim. <laughs> go go great with jug milk. <laughs> I'm wearing a red shirt. I mentioned this already. <laughs> <laughs> I may have been a little bit on purpose. <laughs> Uh, with that being said, of course, there's other resources like GLAD at GLAD, that's G-L-A-A-D dot org, uh, and you can find their resource list there. Um, there's uh, PF flag, or PFLAG at PFLAG dot org, and there's HRC at HRC dot org. Uh, Shin is going to drop all those links into chat. Uh, you can go ahead and click them and uh, get resources and support and with those links, and those links will also be on our website as well. Uh, when the show gets posted, uh, is and there? By yes, Shin, you mean that Dylan's gonna drop those links in there? What, oh, dude? <laughs> Dylan's been on top of things all night already. It's... This is so great, <laughs> Dylan. You rock. Listen, I... everybody <laughs> that runs a podcast, get a Dylan. Dylan's ours. Did you go find your own? <laughs> Uh, is there anything else you'd like, uh, Lacey or Red, is there anything else you'd like to share with uh, us and the people? No, just really remember that Pride Month isn't just, um, you know, it was a big thing that I brought up at the vigil. This month isn't just about parties and marching. Um, the reason that we started marching was following the Stonewall riots. This... We do this because there was a time that we couldn't go outside and be who we are. And, you know, keep that memory in mind when you celebrate. Because having pride is about knowing where we came from, how far we've come, and where we're going. And I've got two things to add on. Um, one, geeky trivia. Remember that Google tailors its search results? to your history and your preferences. So if someone tells you something or you hear something that is completely out from what you expect, consider using a neutral, uh, uh, using Bing or Yahoo or something you don't normally use to look up and see if it's right or not. Because if, so if an ally and a homophobe both type in the search result, uh, the search query, do gays hurt America or something? They will each get search results that appeal to what they to what they already thought. So you can really you, you can keep yourself in your bubble. Um, and it's it's super geeky, but I find a lot of times when I'm come come across ev evidence that's disconfirming, that's against what I, what I believed before. I mean, to be open, you've got to be you, that information has to reach you. Oh, and. The other thing I, I, I might mention, if, if I can get a, a little bit real for a moment, is, again, I'm sorry, I'm speaking from a, from a strictly American context here, but if you support people around you, make sure that you speak up on their behalf in, at times when they can't. Make sure that you are voting in ways that let them continue to feel safe to go out and be who they are. Make sure that your support is more than you putting up a profile picture on your Facebook icon and saying, I like gay people. Make sure you are a force in the world to make the world what, what it needs to be. I couldn't say any of that better. <laughs> in fact, I probably won't <laughs> say it any better. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I always share the sentiment that this this game brings uh, people of all walks of life together to share an experience 
Uh, it's a glorified chat room, yes, but we all do these same things together. We run the raids, we do the trials, we run the dungeons, and sometimes those things break off into things that we're creating ourselves, like with the RP community and their events and, and doing stuff with your FC and finding the people that, you know, help you feel belong in this community. Um, it's, it never ceases to amaze me what people we get to meet and talk to on the show. Uh, Red and Lacey, thank you for coming on and joining us. Mm, pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. And with that, I'm going to do my normal spiel. Uh, as always, you can join us on Greg. Domina de Umbra, the Umbra FC, is where you can find, you know, Shin and I. And, uh, of course, that's where uh, we've been growing. We've just keep, apparently, people just keep flocking to us. Uh, some notable new people. We have, we have a new Lollafell named Chocolate Souffle. So. I'm liking this one. Yeah. <laughs> Wears entirely a carbuncle outfit. <laughs> Liking them more. There you Much go. better than Papa Waffle. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so you can find us on, on Gilgamesh. Uh, come say hi. If you already have an FC on another server, you just want to hang out with us and just throw an alt in there. Plenty of people do that just to hang out. Uh, and like Kane Thorbreaker, who uh, has his alt in there. Um, as always, you can find us here weekly. Or, yeah, or, yeah of course, Avi and uh, Vegan Pete from She Heals I Tank are also in there. Although Avi is pushing Pete to just just to be there like all the time she loves she loves her fc so she's wearing them down <laughs> i'm just saying i've seen them log on more like more and more a little bit a little bit they're logging on more and more uh so you can find us here weekly friday nights at 6 30 p.m uh that is specific standard time you can find us you know that's 9 30 eastern if you're on the east coast like i am uh our recordings are on google play and stitcher we're still trying to fix itunes all iTunes fault. We're trying to fix it. We're trying to fix their broken. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> it's not us. We're trying. We, we're, it, but we are trying. Uh, it's it's unfortunate. It's a bug in iTunes system. Uh, we we promise anybody that's using like iTunes, we're we haven't left you. We we love you. Uh, we our numbers reflect that you're not <laughs> getting the show. Uh, we're trying to fix it because <laughs> we want you to listen to us. Um, but if you do hear this, if you go check our website out, there's Stitcher, uh, that, that platform is open. Uh, I'm also going to see if we can get the show on, um, Spotify as well. So if you do use Spotify, uh, might as well throw our show on there. And, uh, that way you have another option of getting our show. We want to make sure that it's accessible. And of course you can always grab, grab the RSS feed right on our website, which is dot maelstromradio.com you can also find the our email address there which is show at maelstromradio.com if you want to send us an email or questions or concerns you can send it to that uh you can also find links to our uh discord and our twitter uh but if you don't want to go to our website our twitter is at maelstrom underscore radio you can also find us on our facebook page that's facebook.com forward slash maelstrom radio and of course we're on here twitch.tv forward slash maelstrom radio and if you're here listening live if you're new to us and you haven't clicked that little follow button yet uh please do because we're coming up on our our second year and that's 100 episodes and we'd like as many people to come out for uh our 100th episode uh we already have the plans in place i know what we're gonna do for our 100th episode and it now it's kind of kind of like work on everything because <laughs> it's pretty much go time i don't know what it, the, those plans are yet it it's yeah i told you i told you and dylan what it was spoiler i don't remember what those plans are. <laughs> it's uh if you're a fan of our show and you've been around long enough uh it may be You'll like it yes it may be two of your favorite things mashed into one <laughs> so we're good at mashing things together yeah i was gonna say like jugs but that's probably wrong <laughs> the maelstrom radio slogan it's uh it's i think it's like till jugs swallow all yeah no no no. our unofficial one is till lala swallow all from chile yeah according to chile from uh if i mean if it went to jugs swallow maybe till c swallows jugs <laughs> <laughs> something something bag milk yeah something 
milk bags. Anyway, uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. There, there's one thing that we're forgetting. This is the last episode of June. That oh, you're right. This is the last episode. I of did June. promise Emmy earlier in the episode. This is the last episode of June. I keep saying that as I look for <laughs> the thing that makes me say this. Fuck you, it's June. Yeah, fuck you, it's June. Thank you to Emmy for providing this. Thank you, Emmy. And you know what, Emmy? You're the best. Fuck you, it's June. Good, you get it twice. But we'll need a July, so any takers. Yeah, next week. Yep, we'll need a July. So if we got any takers, send me your Julys. So uh with that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it over to Shin and then we'll uh kick it off for the night and uh, end this. Don't yeah, try. I get closing thoughts today. I I didn't wanna I didn't get to specify or specify my closing thoughts earlier, but uh, I do wanna also emphasize that like Maelstrom Radio is a very I hope it is a very inclusive community and we try to be as best as possible. Um, we have many, many members who identify um, within the LGBT plus community, uh, even within our small group, we have people who identify within that group. Um, and we try our best, please call us out on things privately if there's something that you do see because we are trying. Um, I did want to end the episode with a quote from the article that uh, Dylan Thorne wrote and was released earlier called Hear, Feel, Think that I thought was pretty nice. So how do we do better? Perhaps the answer is as simple as looking to the words of Heidelin. Hear, feel, think. When you hear or observe of an instance of someone being excluded, shamed, or bullied for their religion, race, gender, sexual orientation, etc., recall a time when you were made to feel that way, even if in a small way. Think about what you did, what that did to you, how it made you feel, and how perhaps you were looking for a hero or an ally to stand beside you through speaking up. And then know that you can be that hero or ally. Good night. Thank you. Good night, friends. Hope to see you around, Greg. Good night. And these. Thank you all, chat, all everybody that came out. Thank you so much for supporting us, supporting uh, Lacey and Red, and and of course, thank you to Dylan, our new producer on Millstream Radio. Uh, we will see you next week. Uh, don't do we kind of know what we're doing next week? I think. <laughs> if not, I have a backup plan. <laughs> That's fine. We something will happen next week. It'll be us or a dumpster fire. We don't know. <laughs> But till sea swallows all, keep jugging. Maelstrom Radio is a production of MaelstromRadio.com, Blackfire Media Productions. Final Fantasy XIV and Aorzea are trademarks of Square Enix. Opening theme provided by Benjamin Anthony James. You can find more of their music over at soundcloud.com forward slash ben773. Our outro is provided by Soda. You can find more of their music over at soundcloud.com forward slash Soda. Views and opinions expressed on this episode are those of Maelstrom Radio and their hosts, and do not reflect the views and opinions of Square Enix. And until C swallows all, keep listening.